our next guest is really the face of the fight uh, for women's health care. This woman is suing Texas over its strict anti-abortion laws. And she says now she's going to move her frozen embryos out of the state over fears Texas could soon stop providing in vitro fertilization treatments like we're seeing happening in Alabama. Amanda Zorowski almost died in August of 2022 after doctors refused to give her an abortion. She had been suffering complications while 18 weeks pregnant. Eventually, she showed signs of a life-threatening infection, and doctors finally performed the procedure. While Amanda survived, she says the infection and the lack of treatment that she got left to lasting damage to her fallopian tubes. Now, she and her husband have turned to in vitro fertilization in an attempt to start a family. And Amanda joins us now. Amanda, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry this is happening to you and to so many women across the country. Can you first tell us a little bit more about the experience that led you then to turn to in vitro? Absolutely. Um, thank you for having me, first and foremost, and, and for shedding light on this topic. I think it's really important to so many people. Um, so what happened to me as a result of the abortion bans in Texas directly impacted my fertility. And um, after I recovered, after I survived, my husband and I were advised to um, go straight to IVF in order to try to conceive and grow our family, which we're so desperate to have. And it took several rounds of IVF before we created um, a, a number of embryos. But now with this ruling in Alabama, I fear that because of um, you know the ability that Texas has to potentially pass something similar, um, I fear for the safety of my future and my embryos. And so we're getting them out of here. So if, uh, if you're able to get them out of here, um, I, I, I'm hoping you'll still be able to pursue your fight, really, to have a family. But what do you say um, to officials in Alabama, to the Supreme Court ruling, uh, I'm sorry, the state Supreme Court ruling in Alabama, and, and now you know this will, this will take over and spread to other states, that embryos are children and therefore I mean, it makes no sense because what will Alabama do with all of those embryos? How far do you think this will go? And, and what do you think this is doing to women in America overall? I mean, that is my greatest fear is that we don't know how far this is going to go. The, the slope here is so slippery and it's so steep and it's terrifying. If you are fortunate enough to have little to no experience with IVF, you don't know the layers of fear that are now compounding our ability to to have a family, right? And, um, you know, this happened in Alabama, and depending on what happens in November, this could be a nationwide situation, right? Trump has already right. said that he supports a nationwide abortion ban. Um, and, and this is his fault because he very proudly touts the fact that he overturned Roe v. Wade. And because of the Supreme Court justices that he appointed and the fall of Roe, now states have the ability to pass these draconian laws. And we have no idea how far it's going to go. And that's what's absolutely terrifying. Amanda, you almost died because you couldn't get the termination that you needed during your pregnancy uh, that was um, causing you immense pain and threatening your life. Um, and now in the IVF journey, can you explain to those like, I don't know, Tommy Tuberville, who doesn't seem to know what IVF is, the stress, the waiting, the process, the pain of IVF, of that journey, uh, of what it's like, you know, without these bans now in, that are, you know, hitting states like Alabama? Yes, thank you for asking that. Any person who has been through IVF will tell you it is one of the most grueling, most difficult things a person can go through, not just physically, 
but emotionally, psychologically, there is so much anxiety, there is so much unknown, um, there's so much fear. And now these laws that are now in effect in Alabama and could spread across the country, thanks to Trump, um, you know, it just adds another layer of fear. And you're already going through the most grueling thing imaginable. And now we have to worry about the safety of our embryos. We have to worry about whether we can be held liable if something goes wrong. And by the way, the process of IVF is extremely precise and extremely intricate. But there are lots of scenarios where things can go wrong. And that's just the nature right. of, of the process. And so if something goes wrong, am I now going to be held liable for wrongful death because science didn't fall in my favor? I mean, the fear is is just massive. IVF alone, you're dealing with the constant stress of the odds, the shots, the appointments, the changes in your body, the hope your body will perform, the hope the procedure will perform, the hope the numbers will land in your direction, the waiting, the constant waiting and hoping. And I, I'm wondering if you could answer this question. It's so hard. It's so grueling, as you say. Why do you do it? <laughs> because we want a family. We want kids more than anything. Um, and it's something that, you know, I feel very fortunate that IVF was an option for my husband and I, and that it is something that we can still pursue. But now I'm living in constant fear that that choice is going to be taken away from me. Amanda Zorowski, thank you very much for coming on the show. We'll be thinking of you. Hope you can come back and, and update us. And I hope you have success in your pursuit of having a family despite, despite what is happening. Thank you for coming on this morning. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me.